Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here with you today. So uh, I will start with a question. How many of you, of there is somebody in the room who has used the UN Maps Learning Hub? No. One. <laughs> OK, that's great. So what we are speaking up about. So UN Maps, why UN Maps? Um, we work uh, for an initiative called, uh, called UN Maps, and it's an initiative of the United Nations. And uh, what we are doing is to provide mapping support, so cartography and uh, um, maps, to the peacekeepers working in, uh, well, at this moment, mainly in, uh, in Africa. And uh, how we are doing that? So we have an hybrid approach. Um, we are mixing. We have uh, this hybrid approach. So we are mixing United Nations official data. So uh, I mean, for example, boundaries of the countries or uh, names of the places, uh, just because this data is uh, sensitive data and could raise a lot of problems if the boundaries or the names of the places are wrong. And we are mixing it with a base map of uh, uh, extracting data from uh, OpenStreetMap. So we are producing mainly topographic maps. And what we are using are um, the highways, the waterways, and land cover, residential areas, and uh, node places. Uh, for, for our maps. We have an internal team of uh, mappers. So we have seven people, eight working in the, in the group there. And um, we have also a group of three people, one is me, that is working uh, for the crowdsourcing, so with the volunteers and the uh, community. We started working on that like uh, four years ago, more or less. And um, we started engaging with the volunteers and asking the community if they would like to participate to the, uh, to the uh, mapping of topographic features. But we found one main uh, problem. And it was that we are mapping topographic data, so highways, waterways, and so on. And when we had uh, questions from the volunteers asking, OK, how can I get involved? Uh, what I should map? We, <laughs> we were searching for the material to give to the volunteers. And there, was, there is a lot of materials. There are a lot of platforms where uh, you can find uh, information about how to map. But uh, for our precise scope, we didn't find uh, anything. So we thought, OK, we can try to. Um, to collect some material and to put it together. So why establish a learning hub? So this was the, the main reason. And uh, of course, is our uh, objectives are aligned with the uh, United Nations values. So our scope is to empowering the volunteers. We are working with volunteers from all over the world. Is also enhancing mapping quality. Um, because we can get a good quality of the map only if we have good mappers and only if we uh, educate the mappers you know, on, uh, on what we are uh, doing. Another important aspect is the global reach and the inclusivity. So we will see how we try to engage with uh, also, for example, people with low, low connection, uh, internet connection. And another uh, point is the recognition and motivation of the uh, mappers. So we thought, OK, but if the mappers are helping us, how we can recognize their, uh, their work? And we will see uh, now. So we built this UN Maps Learning Hub. And it's uh, uh, based on, uh, on Moodle. Materials are released on CCE by SA, so everyone can use them, of course, uh, with uh, appropriate credit. 
all the resources can be downloaded for offline use. So in this case, when we are, for example, working with people in Africa, it's important that they can get the data some, uh, in some way so that they don't need to use the internet connection. It requires registration, and this was a, a hard point because um, some, uh, some people were asking us, okay, but why I should register to uh, access this material? We will see why. And we, uh, we, we should think about this UN Maps Learning Hub not as, uh, okay, I will go there and I will learn everything about uh, OSM. It's not so. You will learn topographic mapping in the African context. So we have a very specific uh, target. Of course, there are also other things that, uh, for example, validation and so on, that can be applied to, um, to other cases. So uh, we were speaking about a multilingual approach, and this is for the inclusivity of everyone. So we uh, saw that there is a lot of documentation in English, but some languages are not uh, covered here and there for specific topics. So we, um, we tried to do as many languages as possible inside our team. So we have now English, Spanish, French, Italian, and Portuguese covered. And uh, from time to time, when we are working with different communities, we try to add the, the language. But also, we have a problem or model because there is a, a character limit. So we are trying to um, deal with that. And uh, from this year, we have also Chinese. And the translation was provided by the uh, Chinese community. So we are trying to uh, build something also together with, uh, with the community. What you will find on, uh, on the Learning Hub are one uh, is the OSM Basics course that is uh, covering the, uh, the getting started, of course, how to open your OSM account and so on, how to use ID, and how to use JOSM. I remember when I first started mapping, it took me years to jump from ID to JOSM. Because and even if I'm a GIS uh, person, I was working with GIS and so on. But for me, it was a big step to, to go to JOSM and started using it. And then we focus on the uh, OSM mapping, but uh, for the mapping uh, topographic features. So again, roads, waterways, and um, places, and uh, residential areas. We are covering also the geographic context, which is very important, but is very uh, is something that you will not find much around. So how to deal with the uh, topography of the places, or uh, for example, how to use the imagery that we have on, on OSM. Then, okay. This year is a new feature from uh, the, this is a, a new feature from the 2023, and this our OSM Advanced course. And here you will find how uh, mainly how to validate the data, how to become a good validator, and it's covering like uh, the tasking manager process, of course the uh, JOS, JOSM validator, but also how to use Overpass, Osmos, who did it, and OSNCHA. And I think to find everything, all this material in one place is, uh, is really helpful. Because if not, you should jump from one platform to another to, to find it. We uh, think that it's also super important to understand how to uh, communicate with the other OSM contributors. So how I should say to a person that I'm validating his or her data and that, um, for example, uh, there are things to, to improve. And also we added a, a OSM validation workflow, so with the steps to uh, start your validation until the end. OK. So. How we, uh, we, can, we can measure uh, learning outcomes? We have 
which is, and this is why we are requiring the registration to the learning platform. Because in this way, if you register, you can keep track or, of what you are doing. So we have some quizzes for every chapter. In this case, they, they are really difficult, <laughs> I must say. And for example, we have some images and it's asking, does the orientation of the waterway seem logical? So you will need to understand the topography of the place and so on and think how to um, answer it. Or for example, how do you explain the fact that the central part of the road meanders between contours with steep slopes and descents over short distances? So uh, we want the, to, to make you think, no? and uh, to understand really how you should map and which, for example, which tag you should use. The quizzes have uh, some time um, to, to do them, but you can attempt them how many times you, you want, because as I was saying, they are difficult, but you can try yourself and <laughs> tell me later. So, um, Another thing that uh, I was mentioning, so you can progress, uh, you, you can track your progress, and then you can see if you have read the, the chapter and so on. And I think when you, uh, when you start a learning path, it's super important to know if I have read it, I have done it, where I was, because you will not learn everything in one day. So you will need to uh, step in again, maybe, and to check where you were, uh, what you were doing before. So uh, we are doing also some trainings. Um, currently, we are doing one in uh, in Spanish, and what we do is the evaluation of the people participating in the trainings. And this means that, for example, here uh, under, I have the, um, the students from a GIS lab in Kolkata in India. And I have 30 people there. And they are submitting their uh, work on OSM. And we are checking individually each mapper. And we are giving them feedback. So it's a one-one. Um, relation with the with the student and at the end of the of the progress what uh, we are releasing and this is the way that we found to award our um, our mappers is to provide a certificate of completion um, note that to get this certificate you will need to map on OSM you will get also feedback from uh, from the teacher and, uh, and so it's something that we are trying to assess. So we are not giving the certificates because yes. So there, there is a, a verification behind. On the learning hub, some, uh, some statistics. We have now, uh, it's more or less one year that uh, the learning hub is open and we have 1,600 students enrolled on the OSM basics and 100, 187 users on the OSM advance. Regarding the uh, geographic region, we can see that uh, most of the students we don't know because they are registering uh, via uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on, so we don't get the, the country data. But uh, for the rest, we can see that uh, um, they are coming mainly from the south, so Eastern Africa, South America, Western Africa, South Asia, and then Southern Europe and all the uh, geographic regions uh, in line. We can see, well, unfortunately, uh, we were not able to download the information and to view the information regarding the downloads from the Moodle, but we can see that at least people are viewing the uh, offline documentation. So we think it's something useful for the, for the mappers. And regarding the <laughs> percentage of users who completed the, uh, the courses. 
um, we were surprised, I would say. So we can see that the percentage of users who completed the every chapter are 12% for the first chapter, 8% from for the second, and so on. We have the hot tasking manager a little bit with the 5%, but they are decreasing. And um, some statistics, also some percentage about who was doing what. So, and we can see that did not read or pass anything, we have 70%. So, and we were, okay, there is something that is not working here. Uh, or that the, the, the percentage of people who read and did everything was the 2% of the users. We were, okay, there is something, uh, something uh, wrong, but okay, then we check it. And for the massive open online courses, the percentage of uh, dropout, the dro dropout rate is around 90%. So 19% of users who um, enroll to a course online, they will not finish it. So we, we tell, okay, that's, that's okay. But, um, and yes, and we also have some users that uh, maybe some OSM super mappers that they uh, check in to the, um, to the learning hub just to check the quizzes <laughs> to see if they are good mappers, of course. Okay, future developments. Uh, we are moving uh, towards to have the Arabic translation competency badges, so to make it a little bit more uh, catchy and to give uh, to the mappers some recognition in, in each chapter. Uh, courses on open source software as QJS, and also some courses on UN Maps applications, but this will be only for UN personnel. How you can enroll, um, this is the, uh, the web page, mappers.un.org slash learning. You can subscribe with Azure LinkedIn or your email, which is recommended. Uh, Facebook is not working very much because we have some security issues, so I would uh, not recommend it. Uh, you can choose your preferred course, um, and you can simply start uh, start learning for there. From them, I let you the QR code if you would like to um, to subscribe to the to the learning hub. My contacts are there. Uh, you can write us at UN Mappers. Uh, UN.org, we are always replying to everybody. And uh, this is my username and my, my email. Of course, feedback on the content is highly appreciated um, because we know that we, we are trying to do our best, but we are not perfect, <laughs> of course. So if you see that uh, there is something incorrect or that we can improve a part, we are, we are there. We have a lot of ideas. We would like to um, to do more material also, for example, on field mapping and so on, but uh, step by step. <laughs> we, are, we are trying to do that. So thank you, everyone, and I am open to questions. Take this one. Um, do we have any questions? Oh, questions straight up there. Okay, if you say your name and then ask your question. So, Lorenzo uh, from Wikimedia Italia. As we, we are preparing a lot of different, and um, we already prepared if some of different courses, maybe on field mapping, and we provide material from teaching for school. So, I would like to ask if it's possible to like submit this material to you and maybe uh, having a starting point in which we validate it, we test it, and we use it in, with people and they learn how to use it and maybe it could be helpful for starting about new topic like field mapping, street level imagery or something like that. Yeah, I think we are super open to, to collaborations with, uh, with anyone and uh, we can join forces because I think it's the better, be best way to go uh, to have a, a, a good and a comprehensive course there, so of course, yes. Hey, thank you very much. I'm Pete from HOT. Um, how has the learning platform affected the mapping? Because I guess you created it 
to get good quality and strong contributors. Have you looked at the impact of the... Um, so we are in a preliminary stage. I would say we have not yet so much data on, on that. But from the point, my point of view, so I'm teaching in the courses, is that we thought, for example, that mapping places or residential areas were the, the most easy things. Now, OK, you just put a node in the middle of a residential area. You draw the residential area in that soil. And maybe uh, mapping the waterways is something uh, that is difficult. And, uh, and so we, we, we thought at the beginning to uh, engage with the volunteers, with the beginners, and make them mapping places and residential areas. But at the end, now, uh, after four years, we should say that, for example, for volunteers, it's easier to map waterways rather than places and residential areas. And we are really surprised at the, about that. But uh, yeah, but this is coming from my experience in teaching. Um, for the learning hub, we I think we need to wait a little bit more. But I, I, it seems that for highways and waterways, it's it's working. Yeah, I don't know why there there is this. I, I would like to discuss later with you about the places and residential areas. That's a conversation for after the uh, the next break. I think then. Hello, this is Salim from uh, TomTom. Tom. Sorry, I came a bit late, uh, but just if to know if your platform is uh, kind of open or you, somebody should moderate from the UN. But again, it's a kind of a proposal. If, if it's open, we can probably in TomTom Tom have some kind of contribution because we have been working in editing and supporting the OpenStreetMap. So yeah, just to learn from you more. Thanks. Yeah, so um, the platform is based on Moodle and we require registration to it from the user perspective. On the content, we, uh, we have a responsible of the, of the content, so he's managing everything and is coordinating the, the work, so the, the courses and uh, what we uh, are providing. Of course, if you have any material that you think that we can work together to build something, a course that could be uh, interesting for, for the community, we can think about a collaboration and see how we can work together. Cool, good to hear. Um, any other questions? No, then um, I will thank you once again. Thank you. Um, thank you all. Thank you.